we want to determine if the infinite series converge or diverge. Looking at the two series, notice how they're almost the same except this series alternates and this series doesn't. So to determine if this series converges or diverges, I think we'll apply the limit comparison test. So to begin, we'll find an infinite series that resembles this series that we know converges or diverges. Notice how the given series resembles the series where we'd have the summation from n equals one to infinity of n to the fifth divided by the square root of n to the eleventh. But we know the square root of n to the eleventh is equal to n to the eleven halves. So let's write this as the summation from n equals one to infinity of n to the fifth divided by n to the eleven halves. And now because the bases are the same and we're dividing, we'll simplify this by subtracting the exponents. n to the fifth divided by n to the eleven halves would be equal to n to the power of five minus eleven halves, which would be ten halves minus eleven halves, or negative one half, which you can write as one divided by n to the one half. So we can write this as the summation from n equals one to infinity of one divided by n to the one half, which we should recognize would diverge by the p-series test. So for a quick review of the limit comparison test, since our series, the summation of a sub n, resembles the summation of b sub n, which we know diverges, if the limit of a sub n divided by b sub n equals l, where l is positive and finite, then since we know the summation of b sub n diverges, so does the summation of a sub n. So we'll be trying to show this series diverges by the limit comparison test. So now we'll take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, which is n to the fifth, divided by the square root of n to the eleventh plus three, divided by b sub n. Let's write b sub n in this form here. So we have n to the fifth divided by the square root of n to the eleventh. And then we'll write this quotient as a product. This is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the fraction in the numerator. And then we'll multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction in the denominator, which would be times the square root of n to the eleventh divided by n to the fifth. Notice how in this form, n to the fifth over n to the fifth simplifies to one. So now we have the limit as n approaches infinity of the square root of n to the eleventh, which I'll now write as n to the eleven halves, divided by the square root of n to the eleventh plus three. Now in this form, we can take a shortcut to determine this limit. If we look at the denominator, notice how the plus three is irrelevant as n approaches infinity. So we can think of the denominator as the square root of n to the eleventh, which would be equal to n to the power of eleven halves. So in this case, we can think of the numerator and denominator of having the same degree, and therefore the limit would be equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients, which would be one over one, or just one. So because this limit is positive and finite, we know the given series also diverges. But if we do want to show work on this, we would divide everything by the highest power of n in the denominator, which would be n to the eleventh under the square root. So if we do want to show work, we can write this as the limit as n approaches infinity of, in the denominator we'd have the square root of n to the eleventh divided by n to the eleventh plus three divided by n to the eleventh. But n to the eleventh under the square root is equal to n to the eleven halves outside the square root. So we divide the numerator by n to the eleven halves. So we'd have n to the eleven halves divided by n to the eleven halves. Now if we simplify this, we have the limit as n approaches infinity of, this would be one, divided by the square root of one plus three divided by n to the eleventh. In this form, notice how we can more easily see the limit is equal to one. And because this is positive and finite, and we compared the given series to a diverging series, the given series also diverges. 
So let's go ahead and summarize the results and then we'll take a look at the second infinite series. We compared the given series to the summation from n equals one to infinity of n to the fifth divided by the square root of n to the eleventh, which is equal to the summation of n equals one to infinity of one divided by n to the one half, which diverges by the p-series test with p equals one half, which is less than or equal to one, and then by the limit comparison test, since the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n divided by b sub n equals one, which is positive and finite, the given series also diverges. Now let's take a look at our second series, the alternating series. We'll be applying the alternating series test to determine convergence or divergence. So first notice how a sub n, the non-alternating part, is equal to n to the fifth divided by the square root of n to the eleventh plus three. Notice how here a sub n is always greater than zero for all the i's of n. And now to apply the alternating series test, we need to show the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals zero and a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n. So we'll first take the limit as n approaches infinity of n to the fifth divided by the square root of n to the eleventh plus three. And again, there's a shortcut for determining this limit. We can think of the denominator as just the square root of n to the eleventh, which would be equal to n to the power of eleven halves, which is equal to five point five. So we can think of the denominator as having a higher degree than the numerator, and therefore this limit will equal zero. But again, if we do want to show work, we divide everything by the square root of n to the eleventh, which would be the limit as n approaches infinity of, in the denominator we'd have the square root of n to the eleventh divided by n to the eleventh, plus three divided by n to the eleventh. And then for the numerator, we would divide n to the fifth by n to the eleven halves. So notice how here we have the limit as n approaches infinity of this would be one divided by n to the one half, and the denominator would be the square root of one plus three divided by n to the eleven halves. And notice how as n approaches infinity, the numerator approaches zero, this fraction approaches zero, this stays at one, so this limit does equal zero. And now for the last step, we want to show that a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n. To show this, we'll look at several of the terms using our formula here for a sub n. I've already done this to save some time, and here they are. Notice here, the terms actually increase from the first term to second term, but when n is greater than or equal to two, the terms are getting smaller and smaller, and therefore a sub n plus one is less than a sub n. We just need to make a note here, this is only true when n is greater than or equal to two. So let's go ahead and summarize the results. By the alternating series test, since, let's go ahead and say that a sub n is greater than zero, the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals zero and a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n for n greater than or equal to two, our alternating series converges. So notice how the alternating series converges, but the non-alternating series diverges, and therefore we can say the alternating series is conditionally convergent, which we'll learn more about in our next lesson. I hope you found this helpful.